setting up a crime scene, there are some essentials that you'll need and your students will need to do this successfully. Um, so at the very beginning, uh, when they enter the crime scene, they're gonna wanna secure the scene. So um, if you'll get some barrier tape, now you can order this off of eBay or Amazon, but the cheapest thing to do is go to your local police department and just ask them for a roll of barrier tape. And that's what I've done here. Um, also, my local police department donated these evidence flags. So I do not have enough evidence markers so these evidence flags come in handy. Um, these evidence markers I ordered from Amazon, they were pretty cheap, I think $7.99, but you're gonna wanna have some of those on hand. Um, if you are strapped for cash, you can take an index card and fold these over, uh, and they work great for evidence markers. And I've included a set of those in the resource bundle that I'm gonna share with you um, today for watching the webinar. Uh, also, they're going to need a pair of scissors to obviously cut the barrier tape. And then once the crumb scene is secured, you're going to have a group of students that are going to be taking notes. So they'll need this printable and they'll also need to start or begin to log who comes in and out of the crime scene, what time, what the date was, um, and what agency they were with. So I'm also including both of these printables in the bundle, the resource bundle that I'm going to share with you, and both of these are um, editable. So after the crime scene is secured, your students are going to want to go ahead and start uh, packaging evidence, collecting and packaging evidence. So there's several different options here. You could spend as much money as you wanted to on this part of the investigation, but I try to go cheap because I've been doing this for 12 years and it gets kind of expensive. So in the beginning of my forensics career, I ordered special labels, special evidence tape, special bags from Flynn Scientific or Carolina Biological. Um, way too much money was spent. So this is what I have uh, in my crime scene kit and um, all of this works really well. This is generic stuff for any mock crime scene that you set up. So you'll see here I have a flashlight that just makes them feel more scientific. It really doesn't have anything to do with packaging evidence, but I stick it in there just in case um, in their search for evidence, they might need that. Um, definitely some gloves, and you'll need to keep in mind that your students are different sizes, so I always keep small, medium, large, and extra large gloves on hand. On hand. Um, if I have latex gloves, I also make sure that I have the t natural gloves as well. I ha always have a student that's allergic to latex, so I try to keep in mind uh, those students as well. Now, these boxes came from several students whose parents are nurses or doctors or dentists, so be sure to ask your students, hey, do you know anybody in the medical field that might could donate some gloves and they will more than likely bring in boxes and boxes because they're pretty expensive if you buy them yourself. I offer extra credit for bringing in supplies and I have never ever in the 12 years of doing this had to go out and actually purchase gloves. So definitely gloves. Um, in the beginning, I used to purchase these fancy bags, but no more. You can see my small Ziploc bags came from the Dollar Tree. Um, Walmart is a great, great place to get bags. Um, I just kind of scan the stores and anytime I see bags of different sizes, I buy them. So I have various bags in different sizes. Um, I have my students bring in bags as well. And so we use those to package evidence. Of course, once the evidence goes into these bags, they're going to need to label that evidence. And so um, I get these inexpensive labels for that. Again, real forensic investigators are going to use some evidence tape like you see here. Um, and if you'll notice, this came from our state fire marshal. So every year I invite our state fire marshal to come talk to my students about arson investigation. And he always brings lots of stuff with him. So he provided us with that evidence tape. Again, make sure that you um, utilize your local Sheriff's Department, Police Department, Crime Scene Investigation Team, they are always willing to give stuff that they have just in storage. Um, again, here's some uh, big sheets or larger sheets of evidence labels. I don't know if you can see this. These are a lot more cheap um, to buy than these little packages here. 
But I also have some index cards in case they collect fingerprints. I stick those in their crime scene kit. Um, if you are having a hard time finding labels or you don't want to spend the money, I have just used masking tape. So they can secure their bags with masking tape and of course give it a signature and then update their chain of custody log, which something that I'm leaving out here is a chain of custody log. That is definitely something you need to pack in um, the crime scene kit. And um, I also have that as a printable or free resource for watching or viewing the webinar. So here's a copy of um, all the paperwork that I print out for my students and I bind them in these little um, clipboards and then my students can just, they're grab and go. They just grab them out of their crumb scene kit and um, just take them where they need to. And all of these printables are included in the free resource bundle. And here's the uh, chain of custody log that I mentioned in the previous video. Um, these are, you could just print these out, however many you need, and then the students can just cut them out. Um, again, there's the crime scene notes, the crime scene entry log, which can be edited uh, for your school and your location, your crime scene location. And then um, this is a search warrant that I got from um, our district attorney actually gave this to me. He came in to speak to our class and he left these here. Um, but I do have these as a, a printable as well. And another tip, if you, this is actually a great tip. Um, for years, I had to borrow clipboards when we were working crime scenes from other teachers and I kind of got tired of doing that. So at the beginning of this school year, I bought 10 of these from Amazon and they were like $6. Um, and so I just hang them in my classroom. So I have these little hooks and um, pay no attention to the mess I have in my classroom, but I have these hooks and I put uh, a clipboard at each lab station so that my students can um, just grab a clipboard when they need to um, and they can do what they need to with it. It's really helpful, very useful. So at this point, my students have secured the crime scene. They've separated their witnesses. They've started taking notes over the crime scene and sketching the crime scene. Um, we have marked evidence with evidence markers. And my students are beginning to photograph evidence. I didn't put cameras in the picture. When I first started teaching, I wrote a grant for seven digital cameras. But of course, um, digital cameras are like from the dinosaur ages, my students say. So I let them use their own devices to take pictures because we're a BYOD school. Um, but I do also have a class set of 10 iPads that I also allow them to take photographs with. So any any sort of way to take photographs. I usually have about two or three students um, taking photographs. So uh, when they take their photographs, I have them put a scale item in the photograph. So I'm trying to hold this with my hand. I'm sorry, it's so shaky. Um, so I make them use uh, these caliper, calipers here um, as the scale item. They just stick it beside the evidence and then they photograph the evidence for a scale item in the picture. Um, so photographs are going on at this point. They're starting to package and collect evidence. And these are just some extra things that I put in my crime scene kit. I always put magnifying glasses because they feel like they're real detectives if they are able to use these. And they're of no help at all, but I always stick them in there. Um, I have some sterile tip applicators, which are fancy terms used for Q-tips. And so I stick those in there because occasionally they'll want to collect DNA and um, sample fluids. And I always put some fingerprinting stuff in, in, in my crime scene kit. So um, I, I want to take a second just to talk about this. Um, this is fingerprint powder that my local police department donated. And it works really good, but it's very messy. I discovered this. Um, on Amazon, this is magnetic powder. And if you are going to invest any amount of money in your forensics course, I highly recommend you get this. So I'll try to put a link. Um, but this particular company, Lynn PV company, um, makes like the best magnetic fingerprint powder. And I'll try to do a demo in a later video to show you how it works. But um, basically, you take this wand, dip it in the powder, it's magnetic, you brush it over a fingerprint, and then the fingerprint appears, 
And then it's the cleanup is amazing. Um, it hardly leaves any behind because it's magnetic. You can clean it up and then reuse it again. Um, so I always put some of that in there. And then occasionally my students will want to collect fingerprints from suspects that they question. And so I just put a fingerprint um, pad in there with some um, ink as well. And that came from my local Dollar Tree. So that was only a dollar. They were a dollar a piece. So not a lot of expense there. Um, I also throw in some forceps and some index cards because, of course, if we're talking about fingerprints or I want them to collect fingerprints, um, they're going to put that fingerprint uh, or lifted fingerprint on index cards. So I include those. And then definitely Sharpies because they're going to be signing their evidence seals. I put a few of those in there. And then this, I tell them, is a magic potion, a magic test for gunshot residue. Um, occasionally, when I do mock crumb scenes, for whatever reason, they'll want to test for gunshot residue, and so I'm prepared for that. So I just put some ammonia in a little vial, and I put that in my crumb kit in the event that they want to test for gunshot residue. I'm one step ahead of them. And um, the way that works is if they are going to collect gunshot residue, I just, wherever they're going to swab, I put some phenolphthalein which you can also get off of Amazon or your chemical supply company. I put a little bit of phenolphthalein on my suspect's hands or on my crime scene weapon or, you know, something where I'm pretty sure they're going to want to know if there was gunshot residue there. And then um, they'll swab it, of course. And then when that swab touches this ammonia, there will be a, a color change. A chemical reaction will occur. It'll turn um, magenta or hot pink and voila you have a simple, easy um, chemical reaction that tests for gunshot residue. And then I put all of this equipment, um, the equipment that I showed you in the previous videos, as well as this in a little box. And then I stick this box in the crime kit. And this is just an old shoe box that I had. So I forgot to mention the importance of rulers. Make sure that you throw a couple of rulers in your crime scene kit because um, your sketchers are gonna need those rulers. Um, and then you can see this is everything all together. So I've got all my documents ready to go, all of my printables. I've made plenty of copies. I've got my scissors and all my labels, everything they're gonna need to mark and package evidence. And then I have everything that they're gonna need um, to search their crime scene and collect evidence in this little shoe box. And the last thing that I highly suggest you do is go to like your local Dollar Tree and get these really cheap baskets. And um, I've got these all around my classroom. They're labeled by groups. Um, and so what my students do is they put all of their supplies in these baskets and um, take them out to the crumb scene. And so they have a little carrying case and um, they have their crumb scene kit with them and everything is ready to go and pretty organized. So this is what I call the essential crime scene kit for working mock crime scenes. So here is my final product. It's a grab and go kit that the students can use. It has everything that they're gonna need in here um, to work a mock crime scene. Um, so that's organized for them. And then I also have sort of an organization system for myself where Every time I do a mock crime scene, I package all the evidence and everything that I need for me in a little copy paper box and I label it and then I store it in my filing cabinet. So all I have to do from year to year is just grab this box, set everything out. I have this ready to go for my students and so it's no prep, no work, no stress on my part. Thank you so much for watching. I certainly hope this video was super helpful in your quest to create a memorable and meaningful forensics course. If you're interested in the free resource bundle that was mentioned in the video or in the links to the tools discussed in the video, you can download those freebies by visiting www.thetrendyscienceteacher.com forward slash kit. That's www.thetrendyscienceteacher.com forward slash K-I-T kit. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye for now.